Welcome everyone, my name is Garrett and I wanna welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to do one more Battleship game in Python. So let's take a look and recap what I've built so far. In previous videos on my channel, which I'll link in the description, are some of the previous games that I've built. So I built a single player game in Python and essentially what that does is it places five ships on a board and then a player has 10 guesses to guess that. The next version, I built an advanced one with a computer. Essentially what this does is we both place five single ships on a hidden board, and then we guess each other's ships until someone guesses all of them and then the game's over. The third version, what I did was I did five different ship types. So if you're familiar with the game, you have one, two, a size two, a three, a three, a four, and a five. Essentially what that was more complex because I had to check to make sure the ship fit on the board and it didn't overlap. So that was the more advanced version. And now as I am going through my journey of learning the fundamentals of Python, I am on my last version. I'm going to wrap it up. And essentially I'm gonna rewrite the single player game in object oriented. So I'm gonna create a couple classes that way we can practice object-oriented programming since uh, we're doing this in Python. And then uh, I've just written some future considerations from algorithms. So if you are interested in building on this, I have put some more intelligent AI considerations that can be done, but I think I'm gonna wrap it up after this one and go on to another project after this. So let's get started. Uh, so if, yeah, if you have any questions, reference these earlier videos, but for this one, we're gonna do a simple rewrite of the single player game. So let's start by, let me showing you what it looks like as we run it. So what we're gonna get is a simple board. We're gonna have a column A through H and we're gonna have rows one through eight. And essentially what has happened is the computer has placed five hidden ships. And so we have 10 turns to guess it. So we will enter a row and a column and it will show an X if we have missed and it'll show an X if we have hit. And the object is to get all five ships, we win. Uh, or 10 turns, it says we have nine turns remaining and we lose. So you can tell this is pretty basic, but it helps us practice. So let's get started and I'll start with a blank one and then I'm just going to copy in each function or class as we go and kind of explain it. That way it'll prevent typos. So we'll start with uh, importing random because we are gonna need random to place the ships on the board, the computer's gonna just use random uh, numbers. All right, so our first class we're gonna use is the game board, and we're gonna have two methods inside this class. But first, let's just look at some of the syntax. So we'll have a game board, we'll call it game board. This is the, uh, it turns green here to let us know it's an, it's an object. And essentially we have this constructor or initiate, and what it does is we are going to pass in boards. So we'll have a user board and a computer board. And so that's what we're gonna do here is self.board equals board. Uh, once we pass this in the init, we wanna go ahead and, and say self.board equals board. All right, so we're gonna have two methods that's inside this one. The first one is going to be a conversion. And what this one does, we'll go back up to here to uh, show you the board. So we have one through eight. That's easy for us to translate to the computer. However, I created another column A through H. So that way we wouldn't get rows and columns mixed. However, within our list, it is one through eight, or actually it's going to be zero through seven uh, for the computer. So we need a translator to translate whatever letter we type in to a list number. So that's what this does we'll call on this one. So if we type in A, it's actually going to translate to zero or B translate to one. So that's what that one does. And then we have one more, and that's the print board that we just saw. And each time we guess, we're gonna go ahead and print that new board to the user. So we're gonna pass in self, uh, and that's that board that we're gonna be printing. It will most likely be the user board. Uh, but whenever we use self in this object, we're gonna uh, use that one, uh, the self basically points to the its own object, and that's what it, the self means. So we're gonna print the A through H, kind of a header uh, thing that you saw, and then this is just a separator. And so then 
let's go look at this one more time. And so what we're doing here is we're going to start with row is one. So we're going to print out row one, and then we're going to loop through the board and we're going to print out that row number. So the one starting with one, and then we're going to use this join this uh, pipe separator. So essentially we're going to loop through, which is eight times. That's going to be the size of our board. And it's going to, each time it's going to join in a pipe separator. So that's this up here. And then we're going to do that eight times. So each time we're going to increment. So we'll do first time eight and then two all the way through eight. So this will basically create our board for us. So that really is the only two methods that we need inside our game board. And now we'll go ahead and build out our battleship class. So similar to our game board, we're going to have battleship just like this. We're going to initialize the self and the board uh, like this. And then inside the battleship class, we really have a few different methods that we need. One is we're going to need to create the ships on the board. So the computer will have five ships on a on its own hidden board. Then we're going to need to ask for the user input. So what column, what row. And then we're also going to need to count how many ships that have been hit so we can tell if the game's over. So let's start with the creating of the ships. So the way that this works is we're going to reference self. So anytime self is here is what we're going to pass in. And this will be the computer board is where we're going to create these. And so we'll define that in the run later. So essentially what we're going to do is we need a row and a column and we're just going to randomize. So this is where random comes in zero to seven. And then we're going to do this while loop here. And what this loop does is it checks to see if it's already placed something there. So that's the double equals. So double equals, it says, is there an X? And if there is, then we want to re randomize, basically run it again until it finds one that hasn't been already selected. So once this, once that's done, then we'll go ahead and place it on the board and that will be the, um, uh, the computer, uh, board. We're going to place that X. And then when we return the results, when we're done. All right. The next step is getting the user input. So we want the user to guess the row and the column. So how that looks like, well, what we're going to need, we're just call this get user input and pass in itself. Uh, so we we need to try and accept. So the reason we need accept is if somebody does not put an input, it's going to crash. So basically a value is a number and a key is a, is a letter. So if any, if they don't enter a letter or number, then we're going to say not a valid input and then we're going to run it again. So we're going to keep running until they actually enter something. Now the try, what happens is first we want to import a row. So we're going to ask for the user input and say, please enter a row of the ship. And then we want to check to see that it's in the range. So this checks to see, is it one through eight? So if they enter one, one or Z, then it's going to run through this loop again. It's going to keep running. It's going to give them a message saying, please enter a valid input. And then it'll run that row again. So it'll keep running until it gets a valid input. Same thing with column. We're going to ask for a column this time, instead of a number, we're going to ask for a letter and we're going to change it to upper. So that way it matches our conversion later. So we'll say if it's not in a through H, then print them a message and run it again until they get a valid letter A through H. Now, once we have got both the row and the column, we will return that. So what we're going to do with the row, we want to make sure it's an integer and we also want to do minus one. So in our row here, we have one through eight. However, in the actual list, it's going to be zero through seven stored in the list. So that's why we want to subtract one. Now to get our column, the conversion that we built earlier, we're going to call the game board object and the get letters to numbers. So back up here in game board, get letters to numbers. This is see how they're in uppercase. We'll convert any letter to a number. And so we'll pass in here the call, the letter and we'll convert it to a number. And then here's any error messages. So that's how we get our input. All right. Now we have one more. And that is to count the ships on the board. 
So this is going to be a basically a simple for loop to look for X's. So we've I've called it count hit chips, passed in itself. So that would be the board essentially in here. Uh, so we'll create a counter zero, and then we'll loop through that board, and we'll loop through both the column and the row. So the row and the column essentially both vertical and horizontal, and we'll check for any X. If there is an X, we'll add it to the counter and then return the counter. And so we'll call this counter a little bit later on in our run function. All right, so now speaking of run function, let's go ahead and build that and I'll describe how this works. We have created, I've created a new function here called run game. So the first part is we're gonna set up the computer board. So essentially you're calling that game board object and we're going to pass in a basically a list of lists. So it's gonna be eight by eight. And then we wanna create a user guest board. So essentially this is gonna hold the hidden chips and this one here is gonna show us the misses and the hits. So that's what I'm calling guest board. And same thing, we're gonna create a new board, an empty list of lists. And we'll store our results inside of there. Next, what we're gonna do is create our ship. So we're gonna call that object battleship and then the create ships and we're gonna pass in computer board. So we come up here to battleship, create ships and then Basically, the computer board is where it's going to store all of these ships. All right, now we can start the game. So we'll start with 10 turns. So we're going to create a counter at 10. And then we can create a while loop. So we're going to start at 10 and we're going to count down until it's zero. Once it hits zero, the game will be over unless you win and ahead before then. So first, what we'll do is call, we're going to print out the board of the user. So it's an empty board or updated board. So each time we loop, we're gonna call this game board object print board. So the user guest board here, so come up back here to game board, print board, and we're gonna pass in our own board to show us if we have hit or miss. Then we are going to get the input. So we wanna know what are their guesses. So it'd be X and Y. And so we'll call that object here, battleship dot get user input. And I'm passing an object here. So bat, Battleship get user input, come up here, battleship and get user input, and it'll go ahead and run this method and get our X and Y. Store those down here in X and Y. So then we have basically three steps. Once we've got the guess, we want to check to see if it's a duplicate because sometimes they could guess already a miss or already a, a hit. So that's what this while loop will do. It'll check the board, the guess board, both X and Y that they've entered and see is it a is it a minus? That means have they already guessed a miss? Or same thing, is it an X? So this double equals here, double equals here is is this comparison to either a minus or an X? And if it is, print a message saying you've already guessed it. And then it's basically we're gonna run that again. So same thing here where we've got the user X and Y, we're gonna run that until they pick something that's not already guessed and then move on. So after that, if it's not a duplicate, we'll wanna check, is it a hit or a miss? So first we wanna to look to see if it's a hit. So we'll, we'll look at the hidden computer board and we'll check to see if our X and Y guess is an X. And if it is, we'll give a message saying you sunk this battleship and we'll, uh, we'll output that on the guess board. So let's say it's our first one, first X, so we'll go ahead and put that on the guest board. We'll end up printing that out. So yeah, it, is it an X? And if it is, go ahead and place it on the user guest board, that X. So that means there's a hit. If there's not a hit, then there must be a miss. And so we'll go ahead and print a message. We'll say else you missed my battleship and on the guest board, we'll, whatever X and Y was, we'll place a minus. So we have one last, uh, extra two last checks to see if we win or lose. So first we'll check to see if we won. So we'll basically look at the count hit chips. So inside of the battleship class, count hit chips, come up here. This one here, remember it counts how many X's are on the board. So essentially that's what we're gonna do and see if there's at least five. And if there is, we'll say, you've hit all five battleships. Essentially you have won and we'll break out of the loop, game will be over. But if they have not hit five ships, then what we wanna do is subtract a turn. So if they start at 10, each time they run through a guess, then we'll subtract one, nine, eight, seven, et cetera. 
and we'll print that and say, this is how many turns you have. And then until you get down to zero, and we wanna put this here, a little message, a couple messages here. We'll say, sorry, you ran out of turns, game over. And then one last print to show them what their last guess was because it'll be end of the loop. It won't come up to this uh, guess here. And so we'll just give them that last uh, result and then we'll break out of the loop. And then here is the standard boilerplate in Python essentially to start our program and I've just called the run game function. So essentially that is all I have for this one. I've created a couple classes, showed you how those worked. Hopefully that helps. I'm also open to any suggestions. Maybe you have some more additional ideas on some building out the classes, uh, maybe some more, more advanced features. So let me know in the comments if you do have any suggestions or questions. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So long.